I don't think anyone is physically prepared or mentally prepared to actually walk into those red gates. You have to feel like happy that we have a community that's so together that we can come together and kind of create something like that. Like say if I do go back to the school and like sometimes I go to the bathroom, I'd be scared to even go to the bathroom at this point. Like I wouldn't want to like leave the classroom at all. I just stay in class all day. I'm feeling a little weird. It's a little like nerve wracking. We're back on campus. It's been a while. I definitely have a pit in my stomach knowing what happened here. I'm definitely eager to hug my friends and thank the teachers who saved my life that day. Students and teachers returned to Stoneman Douglas High School for the first time since the shootings that killed 17 people. Meantime, the gun debate rages on in America. The CEO of Dick's Sporting Goods just announced that the chain will stop selling assault rifles, high capacity magazines, and it won't sell guns to anyone under the age of 21. Here's the CEO. I'm a gun owner myself, but we've just decided that based on what's happened and with these guns, we don't want to be a part of this story. And we've eliminated these guns permanently. Plus, a few hours ago, the president held a meeting with lawmakers, again, from both sides of the aisle, to discuss school safety and guns. And the president somehow found a way to make President Obama um, the problem. Take a listen for yourself. I think it's time. It's time that a president stepped up, and we haven't had him. And I'm talking Democrat and Republican presidents. They have not stepped up. We're just afraid that President Obama would take it further and take more rights away. That's what I was running into in West Virginia. Or use that as an excuse not to sign it. Well, <clears throat> this is because he was not proactive in getting a bill signed. Yeah. In all fairness, well, he so didn't have a lot of presidential backup. Uh, <clears throat> President was our Obama did support it, but but that was your problem. I know it shocks everyone, but it became about the president at this meeting. But nonetheless, he talked about a lot of policies here unheard of for previous Republican presidents. And uh, I think he was an equal offender here of pretty much everybody in the room, uh, but also even the NRA. But in the process of at least having a dialogue, which I give him credit for, he also went places that I don't think anyone in the room, you know, looked at each other and said, did we hear him right? He talked about policies on guns, including, of course, strengthening background checks, raising the age to 21 for certain gun purchases, and confiscating guns from certain people. And that one will give the GOP certain fits. Take a listen. Or might take the firearms first and then go to court, because that's another system. Because a lot of times, by the time you go to court, it takes so long to go to court to get the due process procedures. Uh, I like taking the guns early, like in this crazy man's case that just took place in Florida. He had a lot of firearms. They saw everything. To go to court would have taken a long time. So you could do exactly what you're saying, but take the guns first, go through due process. Imagine for a moment if President Obama said that we're going to gun grab, okay? He is President Obama now. Oh, that's right, that's right. Uh, listen, to violate every <laughs> other <laughs> amendment to the Constitution. Well, just explain for people that, because a lot of people would say at home, hey, you know what? There's right, crazy people, guns, not a good mix. Just take them away and we'll figure out later. But there's a thing called due process. Explain that in the basic constitutional protections where you can't kick down a door and take whatever you want. That's right, you can't. And, and obviously, you know, the Fourth Amendment protects people from unreasonable searches and seizures, but let me say this, I would be in favor of an abbreviated due process system so that, you know, if there is a preliminary showing by a judge, right. a preliminary showing that doesn't require lengthy hearings, that somebody is a danger to himself or the community, that then allows the police to confiscate the weapons while the matter is pending, and now we'll talk about red flags, we'll talk about yeah. how you get that. I mean, that's something that I would be in favor of, but the, the notion that you can just break somebody's door down and take their things without any showing is, is obvious. And well, that's the ultimate nightmare, by the way, of the NRA, forget it even. I mean, you'll, you'll find a perversity of the NRA and the ACLU will be on the same page on this issue. But Ben, for me, Jimmy alluded to it, red flag, okay? It sounds good. Everybody at this table, and hopefully everybody at home, says mentally unwell people, guns, bad mix. Let's do whatever we have to do to prevent yet another tragedy. But where do you get pause when you hear the, the term red flag, and who shall decide? Look, for f over 50 years, we've had uh, laws that can allow uh, 
persons to be incarcerated if they are shown before a judge in a hearing to be a danger to themselves or others. That's fairly st standard, familiar. Um, but you know, when you start talking about mu a much fuzzier kind of uh, an, a diagnosis, um, I, I don't know that uh, we can automatically say that this young man, the, the killer down in, down in uh, Florida, Robert Kahn, would, would be able to be incarcerated un under those circumstances. I mean, he could be brought in, he could be, I, I don't know what, what you could do with this person except to watch him and, and, and uh, well, well, do you believe that the law is too constricting or it's broad for a reason in terms of it's difficult uh, to involuntarily confine someone. It, it, it sure is. And should it be as hard as it is? I, I know from people who have children who suffer from addictions that are out of control and, and abusive to themselves and obviously a threat to communities that they want to get them help. But to confine someone, especially over the age of 18, is unbelievably hard. Does it need to be as hard as it is? Well, look, Richard, we, you know, we, we, our society does a lot of uh, um, bad thinking. I mean, we should be funding mental health much more than we are. We're, we're not doing enough to, to make, make it possible for these people to be uh, treated. They don't have to be incarcerated, but mm. to be treated uh, in, in ways that might be uh, beneficial. I, I don't know that we, that we should be changing the laws so that we could, you know, kind of like a dreadnet system where we're, we're taking people. F who fair enough. Um, I, I wanted to ask, obviously, the other component, and the president spoke about this today, was he mentioned gun-free zones, uh, that 98 percent of the mass shootings happen in gun-free zones. His perspective, he's not alone in it, is that uh, unwell people target areas where they don't have to fear um, a gun on the other side. I, I don't happen to agree with that. I've said that, but it's not just the president who feels this way. Um, what about the legal issues with arming civilians um, and asking them to assume the responsibilities and the exposure, I would think here, for discharging a weapon and, and basically employing them with not only the discretion to do though, but somewhat the impetus that if you see a problem, you're responsible to address it. It's easy enough to have chaos when you have actual police officers responding from the same department, let alone if you have people from multiple departments responding to the same situation, may not be on the same page. But the suggestion that you're going to have a secret person who has a gun and that that person's going to receive some nominal training, so now they're on par with the best police officers, and they're going to be anonymous, so they're going to be running down a hallway of a school with a gun, and they're not going to get shot themselves. We're going to trust them not to shoot the wrong person who comes running mm -hmm. out maybe for their own well-being, and that when the police get there, they're not going to know that one of us is the secret person with the gun. And you're it's, from it's absurd. Well, there's some legal things for me. I mean, we all have friends or loved ones that are educators here, you know, gun gets taken off a teacher, teacher shoots, gets the wrong person. It's not just the school that's liable. I, there could be some criminal exposure here. What do you see, what have you heard um, or not heard that you think would make a material difference in this discussion? Well, I think the liability becomes an exponentially greater problem than the, anything that it would solve by, ha by arming teachers. You've got obviously civil liability now. The schools are on the hook if there's any sort of innocent uh, friendly fire, so to speak. Uh, there's well, it's well documented that there are statistics that people who uh, have guns in their home um, g they get in the wrong hands of innocent people, their kids or whatever, yep. way too frequently. That would happen. You're, you're introducing a whole host of additional problems. But from the school's perspective and this, the municipality's perspective, there's a tremendous amount of liability that now goes with arming these teachers that has not been properly addressed. In my two senses, if we believe that's the answer, and I can understand having guns in school, put the money where your mouth is and hire a professional to do it. I was just and, and you know what, exactly. don't make the school, exactly. poor school districts and the rich ones two different sets here. Exactly. If we believe this is a national thing that we should do, and I understand the argument for it, find the money to do so. I just saw more than a trillion dollars that's gonna be added to our debt here in the form of tax cuts, okay? If we think that's a national imperative, I think we can find the money to pay for um, protecting our schools better as part of a broader um, reform issue. I just remind you, and we'll talk more about it later in the program. Tomorrow, I'm opening up the phone lines to you at home to weigh in 
on where you want to see this conversation and what kind of changes do you think we need to have. And I don't care what side of the aisle you're on, I'll give you a platform to make your opinion heard. All right, coming up next, we're going to go to the southern New York here. That is the Prococo trial begins to wind down the defense, ramping up its attacks against the prosecutors. We are at the courthouse with the very latest. We'll be right back.